Hi and welcome to this video. I just wanted to uh, make a brief uh, talk about um, memory leaks uh, within the Juice framework. And first of all, let me just say uh, that the Juice framework itself is an amazing piece of uh, software development that I think I said before I wouldn't have been able to progress so quickly in writing a plugin had it not been for this um, product I say essentially a you know, tool uh, framework and the guys that develop it Jules and others um, do a fantastic job um, there's also a strong developer community available on the juice forum which I'll link to um, in the description below um, but essentially what happens when um, you create a, uh, a, a plugin is that uh, the juice framework has leak detection built in so essentially if you know what a memory leak is it's essentially where you allocate memory but you don't free it up and this can be okay in the sense that if you just create something once it sits there and you don't free it at the end of the plugin operation um, then you know it's not going to cause much damage I guess the problem is you've got is that it, particularly um, if you do memory allocation in the audio processing thread which you shouldn't do anyway um, or, or every time the plugin is activated for example then you that plugin can start to consume more and more memory uh, and then obviously if you've got multiple instances of that plugin that problem can scale and you can end up with um, uh, you know you can obviously end up consuming a lot of host resources and then that can lead to performance degradation um, at scale so uh, what happens actually when you create a class is uh, the juice framework has created a macro for you uh, and if I actually brought up the right thing here um, here which is called um, declare non copyable with leak detector hit F12 on that um, so essentially what that does is it runs both um, yeah, there's a juice leak detector, uh, and essentially that will detect. It'll keep a reference count of um, operators, create new operators on your class, and if you don't free them, then that uh, reference counter won't be uh, uh, decrement de decreased. And at the end of operation, yeah, when in the output window, this happens in debug mode. You'll see that you've leaked a particular object. And I can show that now, actually, if I just quickly um, create a loop. Um, oops. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Uh, I've got a leak built into this, and if I just quit, um, yeah. So essentially it's telling me here that objects have leaked. Um, and it said, yeah, I should be using... And to be honest, that's why I haven't posted a video for a while as I've been learning a lot about um, stud unique pointers, owned array, reference counted objects, because I used to write C++ professionally, but that was 20 years ago. I graduated in 2000. First five years of my career were spent writing C++. And C++ standards have improved quite a bit um, since then, and uh, my knowledge has decreased. So anyway, I spent the last week or so <laughs> relearning quite a lot of stuff that I didn't know. Anyway, if we hit F5 and come out of this, um, if we go to the output window uh, in here, what you'll see is um, you'll get a dump saying memory leaks detected, objects, and it should tell me, here we go, yeah, one instance of class audio buffer. And this is the assertion we've got, which is in juice leaked um, object detector.h, that's there. So what you might expect to find is to get... Um, a, you know a line number telling you where you've allocated something that you haven't deleted and that's great you can just double click on it and go straight to the thing you know, like you would with a compilation error for example um, but that isn't the purpose of the juice framework uh, and I've scoured the forums for help on this and I think Jules and the, the other people who are responsible for developing this have basically said that you know, the juice framework is not um, a fully uh, developed uh, memory leak detection uh, framework it's purely for facilitating the creation of plugins and other audio applications uh, and so what the leak detector is for is that you know when you write your own class uh, and at the end of the, at the end of the class you you declare this macro it means that juice is going to keep track of this and if, if you don't free content within that then it's going to alert you at the end 
but yeah essentially what i read was that you know you should be using then a you know a dedicated um uh leak detection method to do that so there's sort of two options there's one built into the c runtime the crt and actually you might have spotted it which i sort of left hanging around in the constructor here which actually this is not uh, i don't actually use this at the moment but there was a sort of way of using um crt debug alloc mem this macro and putting it at the start of your program and then uh, th the built-in essentially what that does is it re replaces new and malloc operators with uh, debug allocation versions and it will check whether you free those corresponding ones by replacing um, uh, those operators within uh, your code but then that can run into problems and conflicts with juice so um, I sort of did try to get that to work I got it so it didn't crash but it didn't actually output any more information than what the juice framework that it literally just said a number of instances um, so anyway there is a very cool thing which you may be aware of called visual leak uh, detector uh, and I'm using Visual Studio 2019 and there have been some reports about the original um, sort of visual leak detector not working well with 2019 so anyway it's currently at 2.5.4 or something but I found this latest version 2.6.0 which I think this is a fork um, from uh, the other one. But anyway, um, it seems to be the same. So so essentially, yes, it it does provide more detailed output and it's really simple uh, to install. So if you go to releases, uh, you download the, the setup file, um, run the installer. Essentially, it's going to install it in... Um, it's going to install it in x86 visual leak detector and you're going to end up with some stuff in here uh, so you've got an include and a lib so it's really simple um, so in order to make it work if you go into visual studio and you um, if you right click your project click properties and you go into vc++ directories what you want to do is in the include directories you want to make sure that you have I've got here the include folder for, um, for visual leak detector where it's installed and that's going to give you um, the vld.h file path which is important and then if we go to lib win64 vld.lib so we go back to here you want to make sure that in your library directories then you've also got um, the Win 64, well, I'm on Windows 64, um, yeah, Windows 10 64, you need to make sure that that is included as well. And the way you do that, if you go into edit, um, it's in here, you can just um, you know, add a new line and then click the ellipsis thing there and it will just basically take you um, to create a new thing. So that's done. With that done, so literally you set two paths on the project and then in the file, so in processor, which is essentially the entry point to my part of the code, um, you just literally include one file, and that is it. Uh, Control Shift B to rebuild. Uh, I do have a few warnings in here. Ignore them. Don't worry about it. Right. Uh, so I hit debug. Um, go to the looper. Uh, create a loop. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, stop the looper and then hit F5. So right. Again, so we hit our debug assertion here. I just hit F5 to go through it. And I know I've got one instance of audio buffer. And it's usually, I mean, in my experience, because audio buffers are the things that you sort of allocate, um, what I do in this project, because, you know, dealing with loops and stuff, then it's likely... So um, this is the juice one down here. You can see that um, there's one class of audio buffer. Um, so what Visual Leap Detector then is, it's um, then doing its additional analysis um, by uh, just waiting for all the threads to finish, and then all of the different memory allocations that have gone on 
um, it will then pre present you with a much more detailed report of where that is, those allocations have happened and where they've failed to be freed. And what I've found is that Visual Leak Detector actually detects far more leaks um, than Juice Framework does, because obviously Juice Framework with the Leak Detector macro is just concerned with detecting leaks within the Juice Framework. Actually, what Visual Leak Detector will actually give you other other things that have happened outside of that. Cool. So what we've got here, so we've got here warning visual leaks and detected memory leaks, and it goes through. And what you get is so you get a, a full call stack, which is really useful, and you get a snapshot of the memory, uh, and then for, for each of those. So essentially, the first one. Let's go to that in my um, plugin processor dot block here. Essentially, I this is the size of a new two nine six is the size of a new audio buffer uh, class, so. I don't free that, um, so essentially that's what it's saying. I've got a, um, a leaked copy of, if I go to the next one, so this size is actually 384 bytes, this is going to be, um, uh, so where's this, this is in my, sorry, in my, yeah, so what I'm doing is I've, uh, so it's here actually, I've, created a new uh, a audio buffer in the active loop and um, he thinks I haven't freed it. I do actually free it later on um, but as I say um, it's not going to be infallible but um, so I think in conclusion um, what I wanted to show was basically if you want to get line numbers more detailed information out um, about where your memory leak occurs, then definitely use a third party um, leak detector. And the one I've found that works for me, Juice Framework, Windows 10, Visual Studio 2019, is called um, a Visual uh, Leak Detector. It's available on GitHub, and I will uh, link the project uh, below. It's a really simple install. Um, and then you just have to set a couple of directories and it is a um, you know it's a one line include uh, to uh, to use it uh, so I use it in plugin processor and essentially all you have to do is do one include and apparently it doesn't matter where you include it or which file or if you include it multiple times you just have to include it at least once in the project so I include it in the actual DLL code, shared or shared library code. Um, I could put it in the wrapper code for VST, but I guess if I wanted it nearer the, um, you know, in quotes, nearer to where the allocations and stuff are happening. So cool. Hopefully that's been uh, useful to you. Uh, just a short one on, on, on uh, memory management. Um, I'm going to follow up soon uh, with a another video on open stage control. I've done and to give you an idea of what I've been working on, this is the new uh, layout. It's for controlling six instances of my VST plugin operating as a looper. Uh, nine instances of it running in instant sampler mode. And then um, there's going to be an effects tab as well. So if you like what you see um, or you want to know more, uh, please leave a comment. Um, and uh, yeah, give the, give the video a thumbs up if it's been useful for you. And if you'd like to see more of this, as always, and keep updated with the latest content, then please do uh, click subscribe and click the bell to get notified when new content is uploaded. Okay, uh, thanks very much. I'll see you next time.